we asked Robin Williams if he could tell the difference between freshly squeezed orange juice and new improved tang. Oh, tang you. You're welcome. <laughs> Robin, <laughs> can you tell the difference? Oh, what pressure. I hope I don't let you down. What if I pick the wrong one? Don't whip me for my mistakes, Captain Bob. <laughs> oh, I'm rowing as fast as I can. Oh, Ben Hur was wonderful, wasn't it? <laughs> can you tell the difference between tang and orange juice? Oh, an experiment. Like Dr. Jekyll. Oh, I'm ready for the potion, Doctor. Oh, my life is flashing before my eyes, but it's not mine. It's Richard Simmons. And one, two, three, four, get those arms up, Mary. Oh, it has new flavored crystals. Oh, crystal, like a crystal ball. What a concept. Oh, Eddie, I'm Uncle Henry. I'm frightened, I'm frightened, I'm frightened, I'm frightened. I'll get you and your little dog, too. We represent the William Morris Agency. Oh, of course, it was so wonderful. Oh. So which one tastes better? Oh. Look at the size of that man's ears. I must find out for myself. Come with me, Igor. Oh, Mayday, Mayday. Captain Krieg is playing with his marbles again. It's one thing in a beach, but it's another thing in a boat this size. Oh, look at the wave coming. Oh, bitchin', man, bitchin'. Let's share the wave and ride it to our cosmic center. Oh, I must warn the others. Oh, Captain Ahab, Captain Ahab, I'd put that well Bang, down if I orange you. You don't know where he's been. The breakfast of astronauts. Oh, astronauts, how oh, wonderful. One giant step for mankind, one small step for Will Chamberlain. <laughs> oh, not in space. Beat me up, Captain Kirk, beat me up. Tired of ordinary television? Don't touch that dial. SCTV is now on the air. Starring John Candy. Joe Flaherty. Eugene Levy. Andrea Martin. And Martin Short. Television like you've never seen it before. This is the SCTV Television Network. Hello, I'm Dr. Raul Withers, chairman of the board of the National Midnight Star. Maybe you've seen our show last week. It was a pretty good show. But we, we got slapped with over five million bucks in lawsuits. Now, like I says, I thought the show was very entertaining. And I guess the, uh, the lawyers of the stars who were suing us thought it was pretty entertaining, too. I mean, they stand to make a pretty big bundle for themselves out of this. Now, what I want to know is this. How come when stars tell lies about themselves, it's called publicity? But when we do it, it's called slander. That's a pretty nasty word, slander. Hey, people, come on. This is the 20th century. We're all in this for a buck. Well, I'd be a liar if I says that I like doing this job just because I like sitting behind a big desk. I'm in it for the money, just like all them celebrities is, uh, is in it for. We're all in it for money. And besides, what we say about these celebrities could be true. I mean... Anything's possible these days. So why the hell am I taking heat? From Hollywood, from New York, from Washington, D.C., it's the National Midnight Star. Good evening. Tonight's headlines. He's really Mr. October. Reggie Jackson today legally changed his name to Mustafa October. Jerry Lewis insists. I'm not just serious. I've got my funny side, too. Racism cost me the lead in TV version of Ain't Misbehavin', claims Dick Cavett. It's true. Despite life sentence, convict teaches himself new career. It's true. I'm a travel agent. I haven't just been sitting around on my butt talks. Now, I wouldn't think there'd be much call for your type of service in prison. Well, actually, since most guys are serving between five and ten years, I'm able to get them a sizable discount by booking uh, years in advance. Well, where do most of your people want to go? Well, uh, breweries are quite popular. There's also the Super Bowl and uh, the Space Shuttle. Space Shuttle? You mean, you mean you're booking tours for the Space Shuttle? 
I will. Yeah, I've had a few nibbles. Uh, the economy's uh, kind of depressed. Well, that's for sure. What's your bread and butter? Well, actually, we have a, uh, a sister penitentiary plan where it's sort of time-sharing with other prisons. Uh, for instance, Soledad is quite popular in the wintertime, and in the summertime, Sing Sing, which is the castle on the Hudson, is quite popular. Well, thank you very much. It was nice talking to you. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, by the way, do you know uh, where the 1992 Olympics is going to be held? You mean you're booking tours for the 1992 Olympics? Uh, I've had a few nibbles. <laughs> nice talking to you. It's a barber shop for owls. Ever since the late 60s, uh, the hippies stopped coming in here for haircuts. The good thing for us, though, they still want the owls neat and trim. Right, Dad? <laughs> Study proves whenever the economy takes a nosedive, the sale of novelty barf mats and wax lips goes up. Hitler is alive and in the United States. That's right. The former Fuhrer of the Third Reich is now slinging hash in a popular Hannibal, Missouri eatery. And if that weren't enough, he's also a woman and the world's oldest short order cook. So why Hannibal, Missouri? You go with a work is. Yes, I went to Sweden, then to Argentina. Look, it's all here on the place map. About our cook, that's me. From Sweden, I sped west to New Orleans on the Mississippi, where my u boat was first sighted by a renowned psychic, Nikki Dane. The rest is short order cooking history. Some pie. It's fresh! And there you have it. Next week, Hitler's recipes. Born without spine, man invents slinky. This week's inside story Betty Thomas is no saint, claims close personal friend. It's true. I told her she'd better wise up. She's turning into an arrogant monster. She's always terrorizing her fellow cast members on Hill Street Blues. And because of her knowledge of karate, they're helpless to stand up to her. She refers to fellow cast member Ed Marinaro as Pinhead and the rest of the cast as scum bunnies. One day, she halted production for eight hours while she forced them to watch her high wire act. I told her to wise up and eliminate the brutal behavior, but she told me that she wasn't going to do it and she was going to continue her brutal ways. What? Well, I got to get going. She's having a party at Sunshine Terrace, and I, I got to get over there. Robin's going to be there and everyone. But you should wise up. I'm Tex Ritter's son, says John Ritter. Me too, says Anson Williams. Jane Fonda shocks Marsha Mason by confiding, your husband wasn't even a real doctor. Brady Bunch's Ann B. Davis claims, aliens forced me to have sex with Spiro Agnew, but I can't for the life of me remember if it was any good. Until next week, the Midnight Star signs off with this. Watch yourself. Our insiders are everywhere. A reasonably faithful adaptation of Charlotte Bronte's classic romantic novel, Jane Airhead. Next. Live from Edmonton, it's Thursday night. Yes, FCTV's got a hip new comedy smash, Thursday Night Live, with guest host Earl Cannonbear. Here's your costume for the pig sketch, Mr. Cannonbear. The pig sketch? Boy, am I hungry, huh? <laughs> because I'm really stoned. FCTV, Thursday night, be there. My name is Jane Airhead. I'm fifth in a long line of Airheads, but in fact, I'm the only survivor, and I was orphaned at the age of 12. I had just secured the position of governess in the employ of Mr. Edward Rochester, where you see me walking to now on your screens.
and there it was. Rochester Estate. I wondered what sort of man he would be. Mr. Rochester? I'm Favisham, Mr. Rochester's gentleman. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. You must be Jane Airhead. Yes. Yes, I didn't expect you'd be so plain. Oh, well, thank you. Or such a dolt. Oh. <laughs> well, you flatter me. Mm. Come in. Yes, thank you. Well, you will excuse my muddy appearance, but you see some country bumpkin just rode me down with his mule. Wrong, Miss Airhead. Wasn't a mule, it was a donkey. A mule is a hybrid offspring between a female horse and a male ass. That's him. You pig-headed moron! May I present Mr. Edward Rochester? <laughs> Listen, Eddie, I hope I wasn't out of line with that pig-headed moron remark. Oh, yeah! You got spunk. I like that. Simone! Come on, I'll meet your new governess. Simone, this is your new governess, Miss Airhead. Hello, Simone. Bonjour, Jane. I'm looking forward to stimulating pedagogical sessions that will expand both my horizons and your professorial boundaries as well, n'est-ce pas? Oh, well, it's all very well and good. Run along then, dear. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Rochester, I'm just going to check my Burlitz book and find out exactly what she said. <laughs> oh, Jane, your bedroom's up on the second floor. Got it? The second floor. Whatever you do, don't go up on the third floor. Why, Mr. Rochester? Oh, no reason. I just wouldn't want to see you get murdered. Murdered? Well, not that there's any real danger of it. Right, Mr. Fabersham? No, oh, no, no danger of being murdered on the third floor. Not even by his crazy wife. If he had a wife, which he doesn't. Isn't that right, Mr. Rochester? Oh, yeah! <laughs> As the weeks passed, I found myself happily engrossed in my work. Not only gaining Simone's confidence, but her friendship as well. I still get 56. No, you addle brain twit. We're multiplying, not subtracting. You're supposed to come up with a larger number on the bottom. Well, assuming this multiplication theory of yours is correct, eight pitted against eight will result in a figure of 64. That's right. Huh. Well, I'm still not convinced. You're going to have to prove it. Why? Why? <laughs> Well, then tell me this. Why is it when you take eight away from 64, you don't get eight? You say it's 56. You're a bad teacher, Miss Airhead. And you're homely as well. I didn't hear no scream. How could it be a scream coming from the third floor when there ain't nobody up on the third floor? I'm frightened, Mr. Rochester. Oh, yeah! Much to my chagrin. I found myself falling in love with the handsome and redoubtable Mr. Rochester. Jane! <gasps> Edward! I got something for you. Close your eyes. Mm -hmm. All right, now open them up. Oh, Edward, it's beautiful. And so huge. Jane, will you marry me? Oh, Edward. Of course I will. Oh, let's not waste any time. I'll meet you around the corner in a half an hour. In a half an hour. Oh, yeah! <laughs> You 
are such a dolt. Thank you, sir. I've never seen such a homely face. Ouch! <laughs> Sweetheart, do you mind if I wear these? Too much plainness gives me a headache. <laughs> Edward, may I have a word with you, please? Are you sure you want to go through with this? Why? What are you trying to tell me? Well, I may be a minister, but I'm also your friend. I mean, look at her. Her origins are so low, you'd have to limbo under her family tree. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely dress, my dear. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Edward, where in heavens did you get that dress? Fredericks of Hampstead Heath? I mean, if every dress needed a veil, that's the one. <laughs> no, 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 we kid. But this wedding must not continue. This man is married to my sister, and she still lives in the attic of this very house, chained like an animal. How could you? <laughs> Everyone, to the attic. See for yourself. Like I said, nobody here. Let's go back downstairs. Give me that torch, Rochester. She's up here somewhere. <laughs> there she is. Bev! <gasps> is that or is that not your wife? Oh. Well, I never said she wasn't. When she was 18 years old, she was sharp as a tack. And when she turned 20, she became crazier than a jaybird. I'm talking... <laughs> she was that crazy? Oh, yeah! and you left up here to die. Well, what do you want me to do? Put her in a loony bin? At least here she gets three squares of fresh torch every day. The hell, she's probably living better than you are. No, I will not marry you. I will not be your mistress. And what was that other thing you wanted me to do? <laughs> <gasps> and I definitely won't be doing that. Oh, I wish I'd never been born. Goodbye, Rochester. Jane, come back! I love you! You once loved me, Edward. But now you'll never love another! <laughs> My life was a shambles, and I left that house vowing never to return. Then I remembered I'd forgotten my good purse and my multiplication flashcards, so I turned around to go back and fetch them. Oh! <gasps> Eversham! Yes, and lucky to be alive. What happened? Was there a fire? No, I'm wearing a smoking jacket. Of course there was a fire, you idiot. Mr. Rochester's wife set fire to the house. And she killed herself. What about Mr. Rochester? What happened to him? What do you care? You've never loved him. I do love him. I've never loved another man as I've loved him. Well, if you love him as you say you do, then go to him. He's working as a gentleman's gentleman. You'll find him at this address. Now, go to him. Well, go, move it! Don't stand there goggling. Move! Here will I put the boot to you. Move it! Put, put, put! <laughs> Rochester. Come in, Mr. Benny. What do you want, boss? Did Dennis Day call? Yeah, said he was sick. Couldn't make it to the party tonight. How do you like that? And I made a date with these two girls. I'll get that, boss. <laughs> mm -hmm. Why, Jane, Jane Airhead. You're back! Yes, Rochester. I love you. Well, good, Jane. Now we can get married. Oh, yes, immediately. But where shall we live? Well, we could use Mr. Benny's guest house. That is, if the cows don't mind. <laughs> well, let's take our vows of marriage. Well, I can't. You see, I'm Mr. Benny's doorman. I gotta announce the guests at the party tonight. Oh, here they come now. 
Sir Don Wilson. Oh, hello, Don. Sir Phil Harris. Oh, hello, Philzy. Here they are, the Ink Spots. <laughs> the Ink Spots. Now look, Jane, why don't you go in there and pour Phil Harris a drink? Well, which one is he? He's the one on the floor with the empty bourbon bottle. The empty bourbon bottle. Well... Oh, Rochester. Coming, boss. I know what you want. Better get out the earplugs tonight. <laughs> Edward Rochester and I were never married. Sir Philip Harris spilled a flaming Sambuca on his britches and burnt Rochester and the House of Benny to a crisp. Thus ends my tale as it began. Jane Airhead, alone, walking through the moor. Join Mrs. Falbo on her next show for lots of fun. You'll talk to the animals. Hello, fish. <laughs> Look through the magic telescope. And lots more. Mrs. Falbo. Yes, Mr. Messenger. It's time to count to ten. Oh, well, that's good. Four, five. Mrs. Falbo's Tiny Town, soon on FCTV. Dun, dun, dun.